Hey guys, welcome to my um, special channel here that I love to conduct interview with um, doctors that I've been working with and you know who I see unique uh, in their philosophy, how they practice, and then also um, their services they provide. And I see these doctors are helping so many patients uh, through their practice. So I, I um, invited a special a guest, um, you know, spotlight for one of, one of my colleagues uh, that I've been helping with, Dr. Krishna Jensen here. Doc, uh, can, you say hello, can you say hello to uh, our audience here? Oh, hello, and thank you very much, TJ, Dr. Ahn, for giving me this opportunity to, uh, to talk today. Awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about, a um, little bit more about yourself, um, like, you know, kind of yourself, where you practice, how's your upbringing, where are you from, you know, type of thing, so our audience know, you know, more about you. Okay, yeah, I work in Manhattan, Midtown Manhattan, and I'm a very unusual podiatrist because I make custom-made, uh, handmade orthotics from a plaster of Paris weight-bearing model of a patient's foot. And as far as I know, there's maybe two or three other podiatrists in the United, United States that do that kind of work. It's very time-consuming. It's a very low-volume type of practice because uh, each device takes about eight hours to make. So I can only make, help maybe three or four patients a week. Oh, wow. So how long have you been practicing? Uh, well, I graduated in 1989, just to date myself, and then I did a sort of an apprenticeship in orthotics with an old podiatrist uh, back in the early 90s. So was he like your practice. mentor? Was he your mentor? Uh, yes, absolutely, because um, I uh, had done a very high-powered surgical residency, and I did a lot of bunion surgeries and heel spur surgeries. So I saw my future at that time in surgery um, you know, looking back, I'm glad that I had a, a surgical background because I think it helps me now to see, you know, what different treatments are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I got a job just for some extra money uh, helping the old podiatrist make orthotics. Uh, and the, uh, the first day I was on the job, he said, now listen, I, I don't like surgery and I, I, we don't want to talk about surgery at all. And uh, I went home and I cried because I thought that was terrible. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then years, maybe 10 years later, I, I had decided to give up surgery and just work on the orthotics because everybody, every podiatrist did surgery, but nobody was doing this type of work, not, not in New York. So, uh, and then I remembered crying and I'm thinking, wow, here I am, 10 years later, I'm doing exactly what the old doctor told me, which was to, uh, to just work on orthotics and uh, not do surgery. Nice. So tell me more about your, uh, sounds like that's your niche. And I already know because you're my client, but uh, for the audience, yeah. how, how different is this uh, compared to typical conventional way of custom made orthotics that I'd say 99% of podiatrists in the United States here and probably all over the world, most yeah. of them do more conventional method to uh, make custom insoles for their patients. So can you share with us how, 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 how different, you know, your process is? You said eight hours, so can you like go, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yes, it's radically different. Um, it, if, if this were 50 years ago, it would not be different because that's how all the podiatrists used to make their own orthotics. Oh, but over time, it, it was just, you know, when uh, with health insurance plans and whatnot, it just became much more feasible for the podiatrist to hire someone else to make the orthotics. You know, it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't practical for the podiatrist to spend an entire day, you know, helping one patient making one pair of orthotics. So, uh, you know, they, they use commercial laboratories and people who just make orthotics for them. So they send a cast or whatnot and, um, uh, and then the orthotic comes back and the podiatrist dispenses the orthotic. And, and I would say that works, you know, the, the majority of the time that's going to be helpful to the patient, say 80 or 90% of the time even, you know, standard orthotics really work. But that's not my, my typical patient. My typical patient uh, has had pain for years 
and they've had MRIs and they might have had surgery for their problem or they've had uh, many pairs of orthotics. That's, that's, that's common. The patient comes in with two or three pairs of orthotics. Last week I saw four new patients and every single one of them was crying as they told me their story because as they tell it, they're listening to themselves sort of objectively realizing what they've been through. <laughs> so uh, that, that's a typical patient of mine. Uh, so what type, of pain, what type of pain are they, you know, come with? Uh, they, might, they might have uh, some kind of unusual medical problem. So for example, I see a lot of scleroderma patients and that's a, a, a condition where the uh, skin and soft tissue becomes hardened with fibrotic tissue or scar mm -hmm. tissue over time. And it's a very difficult thing to treat. And it's, scleroderma is very rare. There's maybe 250,000 people in the United States with that disease. But I'll see that uh, once a day or even twice a day in my office because it's a very difficult thing to treat with orthotics. So I'll see a very unusual medical condition. There, there's one condition, I call it Janssen's foot. It's so unusual. And I see it all the time, and um, I call it Janssen's foot, which I won't go into the details of it, but I'll see that every day. And then go into a medical convention where they show a picture of Janssen's foot and say, oh, you'll never see this condition, so let's just skip this slide, you know. So I see very unusual conditions. Um, Wait, so, I, hold on, hold on. So Janssen's condition, are you talking yeah. about your, your own condition? Uh, no, I, I call it Janssen's foot because um, I just see it all the time and it's, uh, you know how there's Charcot foot? Yeah, so these doctors, they name these conditions with their own name. Uh, so there's a particular condition that I have called Janssen's foot because it's unrecognized in the literature uh, because it's so rare. Uh, Is it, so you're I, talking about more foot type or more symptoms that they experience with? It is a foot type. So it's a foot type, like you would say pes varus is a foot type or, or a diseased foot sure. type, like charcoal foot. So, uh, you know, without going so into this the is not typical, it. not typical, so, not that, typical. No. so no. that it's kind of hard to do it even with the custom orthotic process <clears throat> way of conventional way that you have to right. send the test out so yeah. that, you know, it's hard to uh, categorize in your opinion so that when you recognize this, it's kind of huge advantage because you make your yeah. own. Right, and I've seen it so many times before. So another podiatrist would look at it and say, oh my goodness, what is this? Uh, so for example, I was, I, and I'm sent uh, patients from podiatrists. Uh, last week I was sent a patient from a podiatrist with bilateral foot drop. So that, that's a very difficult problem. So I am sent uh, problems from podiatrists. Another time I had a, a patient sent from a podiatrist who went to a free foot exam and the doctor said to the patient, look, I, I don't even know what this condition is. I don't recognize it, uh, but I know this uh, other podiatrist. She's a woman and she sees a lot of unusual problems. So I'm going to send you to her. And she had something called Marfan's disease, which is that the ligaments are very, very loose. So the foot was dislocated on the ankle. So <laughs> the podiatrist nice. uh, okay. didn't recognize so, the problem. <laughs> so you, you're not only seeing typical heel pain or conventional drop foot or uh, flat feet or pronation syndrome, but then you get to see these unusual conditions that yes. um, most doctors unfortunately fail to treat these conditions that and sometimes they, they, these people they, come to you. You know, it's, they fail to recognize it only because it's so rare. They just never see it. And, and uh, my practice is that uh, the patient with the very unusual foot problem will tell their doctor that they uh, received help from me and then that doctor will you know uh, get the word out that uh, other patients could come and see me so the, the patients usually come from doctors and that's why i really appreciate you interviewing me today because um, the one of my problems is that i have to find these patients so these patients like i said the scleroderma patient which is you know, one in a million patients, because it's, you know, 200, whatever, you know, it's like one in a million, really. Uh, so how do I find these patients? So I have been finding them in the past, just through word of mouth. So, um, and then when I see one of these unusual patients, I always think to myself, wow, it's really lucky that the patient found me, because I, I take a patient who doesn't walk, they stay at home all day, or they come in with crutches and cam walker boots, and they're really not walking. And then within a month or two, I can get these people walking and happy and, you know, fulfilling their goals. And then I think back and I think, wow, it was almost pure luck that the patient had a friend who had been my patient. 
So this, uh, you interviewing me is great, and I hope that people uh, see this and can come in, and they've, they've been to other doctors and, and, you know, have had the problem for years and are looking for help. Uh, last week I had a patient come in from San Diego. She flew in just for me to make her orthotics. Uh, she has a stiff big toe joint, but she also has an inverted foot. So if you put support around the big toe joint, you'll invert the foot even more. So standard in, th standard orthotics don't work for a patient like that. Mm. And she's a retired nurse. She's very intelligent. Um, it was expensive for her to fly and get a hotel and everything. Uh, but it was worth it because without me making her orthotics, uh, she can't walk. Wonderful. So those are the conditions. How different now? How do, how do you make it? Kind of give us like two, okay. three minute process so that people who might be watching this, either doctors or potential patients who might be looking for this type of service, they kind of understand what's yeah. going through behind the scene, you know? Oh, about okay. the handmade orthotics. Right, and it's eight hours, but it's not all in a row. Because what I first, when I'm with the patient, I have to watch the patient walk and measure the legs and, uh, and look at the posture of the patient. Uh, and then I take a weight-bearing impression of the foot because I want to see the foot and have a model of the foot as it, as it is with weight on it, you mm -hmm. know, as it is walking. So that's really important. And then from that impression, I pour plaster of Paris into it to make a positive foot model. And then the most important part of what I do and what makes my orthotics different from other orthotics is that I carve the plaster cast or I add plaster or both to, this, to the cast. So I change the shape of the cast to have the foot not be the shape that it is, but the shape that it should be. Mm -hmm. And that's called intrinsic posting because that means that the shape is in the body of the orthotic. So I can get a lot of support, but it's very gentle and it doesn't hurt the patient. Uh, versus extrinsic posting, which is putting a material on the outside of the cast. And I actually do that too, um, you know, to, to some extent if, uh, if I, the patient needs it. Uh, but intrinsic posting is really the, the, the um, you know, the key to the success of my orthotics. Okay, and then again, you have a, your own handmade orthotic lab in your, yeah, yeah in your own uh, vicinity. Yes. And then yes, and that's pay... where I am now. I'm in New Jersey. I'm on the Jersey Shore. So I, Thursday nights, I start pouring my plaster. I have a special humidifier. I have special warming. Uh, pads for the cast they have to warm slowly and I have a special filter that I pour the plaster through and I have a special plaster pump in my plumbing because you don't want the plaster to go in the plumbing of the house so I it, you know it's very involved to to pour the plaster cast I need a lot of equipment for that um, I also need my stand where I pour that has to be completely and absolutely level you know both right and left and, and you know north south east and west uh, very level so that the cast comes out perfect. perfect. Uh, and then the next day, then I start working on the Plaster of Paris cast, so I have to alter that. That takes about three hours just to alter it, you know, adding plaster and taking away. It's very, uh, very tedious work, uh, adding and, you know, getting the foot uh, to be what it should be. That's a very tedious work. And then it has to dry again after I've, you know, I've wet it from adding or subtracting plaster. So then the next day, which is usually Saturday, is when I start making the shell of the orthotic. And then uh, Sunday, uh, the fourth day, I grind, start grinding the orthotic. I do a, a rough grind on the orthotic. And then um, I bring the orthotics to my Manhattan office, and there I start doing the fine grind. And then the patient comes in, and I again grind the orthotic to fit the shoes. So the whole thing probably really takes more than eight hours if you include the time. It is, it. actually, it's yeah. yeah. By it's listening to this, I'm sure the audience would appreciate this. It's not just um, eight hours. I mean, you, it'll take four or five days and these expertise yeah. getting into this one pair of orthotics that you're putting your effort, time and expertise into. Um, yeah, this is not typical. This is, this is definitely not replicable uh, by um, you know, majority of, of, of podiatrists and no wonder, you know, this is a unique niche that, uh, yes. that you provide. And, yes. um, 
by the way guys if you um, if you like this you know interview I'm talking to many other uh, experts and podiatrists you know make sure you follow my channel you know subscribe to my channel and so you don't miss out these episodes but going back to this um, you met we met each other about two years ago maybe year like year maybe six months ago something like that right yeah and um, your situation was different so again um, I think patients might appreciate this too but doctors who might be watching this who can refer patients to you also might appreciate this um, can you tell us how how things were different when you met me uh, like year and a half ago and, and how things are now, you know? So I just want to talk about what was going on that as far as practice wise, you were struggling. Um, so, you know, I'd like you to uh, share if you don't mind um, how, how we met each other and then things are changing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, as I've alluded to, my problem was that it's very difficult to find the right kind of patients for me Right. Um, I really didn't know how to do that and um, I had really no social media presence or internet presence, not really. Um, and it, you know, you shouldn't be helping people based on pure luck. I mean, that, that's just ridiculous, you know, that somebody would be lucky to find me. Really, people, wouldn't it be great if people had a problem and they could go on the internet, even if they were in San Diego, like the patient from last week, and say, you know, at least you know, I have to fly there and get in a hotel, but uh, at least I could be able to walk comfortably and to exercise. So uh, that's where you've really helped me a lot, Dr. An, is because um, it's, uh, you know, it's really like helping people. You're really helping people, like a community service. And so it's very satisfying, you know, to, to have that aspect of a practice is to, to help people because you have a niche but I, I didn't know how to do it. And uh, so you, you've really helped me with that and I really appreciate it. Yeah, how things different now? Um, uh, basically- Oh, they're very now different. You, yeah, now no, that I you implement, implemented yes. social media and yeah. YouTube channel, you have a YouTube channel. Yes. I'm gonna put yeah. your YouTube channel in the description here okay, um, nice. so that you know people can visit your YouTube channel, learn more about yeah. your unique practice. Yeah. So, no, it's yeah, it's very different now because um, last two weeks ago, I uh, I got a patient that was just purely from the internet. You know, she was just look. I don't really even know what she was looking at, but she said, you know, she went on the internet and she was searching, and that's how she found me. And she had been to another doctor. She had a, a partially torn Achilles tendon, but she really couldn't walk, and she'd had it for quite a while. And she was uh, not satisfied with the treatment she was getting because she wasn't getting better. And she just went online and said, you know, I'm not getting better. What should I do? And then whatever came up, I don't even know what came up, but she looked at it and said, oh, this podiatrist could help me. She helps other people with uh, difficult problems. So that was, a, you know, so that's a one that just came recently, but it's an example of what's happening now compared to before I met you. I, I, I wouldn't have had, that person would never have found me uh, that's great. Unless we, without meeting you. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I, you know, reason yeah. why I, I'm helping my colleagues uh, in my consulting programs is that they have expertise, they have a heart to help people, but problem is just like what Christina said, you know, unless you know and implement how to send your messages out to the world, not many people would know how to find you they don't know how good this doctor is at this certain niche unless you send your messages out um, so that a lot of doctors have this, you know, kind of concept, oh, I don't want to do marketing. I don't want to become like a salesperson, but mm -hmm. I see it completely differently. Unless we send the messages out there and let people know how good your service could be to your particular medical condition, they will never find you. So I say, yeah. don't be ever shy to, you know, let the world know what you provide, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's ridiculous to be shy. It, it makes no sense, really. But uh, but doctors, you know, I, I'm extremely technologically, uh, you know, 
inexperienced and I, I know nothing about technology. So if I hadn't met you, if you hadn't helped me, I, I would still, you know, uh, have nothing on the internet, basically. I, I had a website, but it was, you know, we didn't maintain it or anything. I really had no internet presence whatsoever. So, you know, you could be yeah. an expert, but it, it, it's ridiculous to be like the, the candle under the bushel, as they say, you know, so no one sees you and no one can find you. It makes no sense. Correct. So I really okay. appreciate That's... you helping me. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I'd love yeah, working with you uh, because everybody's different, just like we're all human beings and everybody has strength and weakness. And just like Christina was mentioning, um, but then my job, and I think what I'm good at is to see the talent in you, hidden potential in every each of us. And then I, I'm helping them to cultivate and amplify what you're good at already. Or, you know, um, you want to help people, but you don't know how to, like how to get the messages out there. Yeah. How to also help patients accept your treatment plan, right? A lot of times doctors are uncomfortable. They feel very uneasy talking about money, especially non-cover service about insurance plans. And then they don't know, they tend to give up and then offer them less, uh, like second best, third best alternative solutions because it's easy for doctors to say, uh, oh, just take this treatment then if insurance doesn't cover. That's where it frustrated me that, hey, we're obligated to provide the best treatment solutions for our each patients. But then if you're relying on insurance plan, you know, we're really doing disservice to our patients. And the reason why I brought Christina here is that many doctors in my program, I help them build hybrid concierge model is basically kind of perfect balance between insurance plans and cash pay, self pay model so that um, doctors don't have to be forced by insurance plans. But some of my clients like Christina, it's pretty much more full blown concierge model practice that don't, do not participate in insurance plan because again, they don't want to be forced by insurance covers or not but their main focus is to niche out, you know, like, hey, this is my niche. Nobody can beat this part. I'm the best, I'm the expert in this particular niche. And then I'm willing to provide the best concierge experience for my patients. So uh, Christina is one of them. So can you tell me about possibly your philosophy behind that cash pay model? Oh, well, you hit the nail on the head that you didn't want insurance companies to dictate the treatment plan, which is ridiculous. Because, of course, the goal of the, treat the insurance company is to save money. That's it. That's their only goal, saving money. And, you know, if you want good qual quality anything, you know, if your, your interest is quality, uh, you're, you're not going to be looking to save money. So, and patients, they, they want good quality health care and uh, so as a doctor you're caught between the two between the patient wanting good quality care but the insurance company wants to pay as little as possible or not pay at all so uh, the the best thing to do is to uh, run a very ethical practice because you outlay to the patient right from the beginning what the uh, cost is of the treatment and then let the patient decide and you can, uh, you have to talk to the patient about what the costs are. And like you said, you have to be, um, it must be easy for you to speak about money. And that, that's hard for doctors sometimes. And, and then the other part is, why shouldn't the patient be able to choose what treatment they want? So if they want the best quality, you know, that should be offered to the patient. But a lot of times doctors, they just uh, tell the patient what uh, the insurance company offers. And they don't even talk about other treatment plans you know that are not covered by the insurance so your practice model uh, TJ is that um, you're offering the patient the option of the best possible treatment and you honestly outlay all the costs up front before you know so the patient can decide unlike you know patients go in network 
and then you know a month later they get a bill and oh there was a copay and a deductible and then you find out oh that was not covered by insurance you know surprise you know uh, $2,500 later you, you have this bill outstanding medical bill and people tell me this all the time they get these big bills and and they th thought that you know I went in network so so this is the opposite this is uh, telling the patient from the beginning what are their options you know they have you know option one two three and here's the cost you know it's very ethical because the patient can decide you know before any treatment begins so uh, th that's what I like about working with you is that you're promoting a very ethical way to practice and I, I really Thank appreciate you. that yeah, when you join me, I still remember we have a long like onboarding one-on-one -on -one call uh, when you joined the mastermind. <laughs> and then again, my my mission was to find out what you are, what you have a passion in, and then what you're good at, what you're expert at. And then I wanted to dive deeper. How can I help you help more patients by focusing on? Mm -hmm. what you really have a passion in of course you yeah, treat yeah. you know pain conditions with laser and you know some other you know your unique yeah, way yeah. of treating but i i noticed that when it comes to orthotics so remember i called you uh this is like a bentley of handmade orthotics or like hermes of orthotics when it comes to orthotics who does this handmade orthotics i haven't i oh, haven't met anyone true. around me you, you told me Gucci. I would be the Gucci. Gucci. Yeah, Gucci. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not endorsing any particular, you know, branding here. But what yeah. I'm saying is that you need that branding. If you really want to be good at one niche, you know, that first of all, you cannot fake it. So you have to be good at it. And then now number two is that marketing. You need to send these messages out there. And number yeah. three, you need to learn and you know implement how to convey this communication with your patients so you can influence their decision making so that you can help them accept your treatment solutions so you can help them if they don't accept your treatment that you know deep down you believe in this particular way of treatment solutions the best but yeah. if you don't know how to communicate the right way patients i mean might pass this opportunity and Basically, patients will suffer again, you know, so it's almost like our obligation to provide them not only the best solution, but also communicate with them so that they happily accept your treatment and which I've been seeing now you're delivering crazy results for your own practice building up, uh, you know, and also helping all these patients and happy patient testimonials. So, I mean, this is great. Well, um, again, we can talk more, but obviously she now has her own YouTube channel. And yes. also <laughs> if you join her, you know, network through her, um, you know, marketing messages and, and then her mini websites, you can actually subscribe to her email list so that she sends out, you know, helpful yes. resources like every week that you can yeah. learn more about all these conditions, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. I write a big blog article once a month, mm -hmm. and then all the uh, YouTube uh, videos and whatnot that we put out has a theme. Awesome, so, uh, yeah. This is August, so our theme is dehydration. So, or, dehydration uh, is your theme yeah, problem. Yeah, So yeah. again, she's definitely outside of box thinker, philosopher, and practitioner with very unique way of practicing. Um, anything unusual that people would never think about you when it comes to your hobby and passion, would you like to share with the audience? Oh, uh, something unusual about me? Yeah. Well, um, I'm a prankster, so, and, and sometimes I make uh, like a New Year's resolution not to play pranks on people, but um, <laughs> so that's one thing, you know, uh, just terrible uh, desire to play pranks on people. But um, but the patients and I have a lot of fun. I'm also a puppet, a professional puppeteer. I, I do work with puppets uh, for children's that's, charities. That's awesome. uh, I do that. So I, you know, I'm obviously crafty because I work with my hands all the time, uh, and I'm uh, very devoted to um, uh, lifestyle and fitness tips for patients. So that's another passion of mine. And I'm working on my book. So the patients always ask, "When's that book coming out?" You know, so okay, I'll, 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 I'll finish my book. <laughs> so, 
Oh, those are my passions. Yeah, and then also, guys, um, if you're a podiatrist watching this, uh, don't try to think that you can do everything alone. You know, the, join the community with like-minded colleagues, like just like our group. You know that you can bounce off ideas each other. How else we can help our patients? How else we can grow our practice better? And also, what I see in, from a lot of colleagues, they're not maximizing their resources around them in their environment. Um, to help them, help them grow their practice. Like Christina, her husband, I mean, he's like tech, so tech expert and then like video yeah. editor, you know, like media editor. So when I saw that, I'm like, Nick, join here together so that, you know, you can help, you know, this practice to grow more like efficient manner. And he's been helping Christina tremendously. So I want yeah. to kind of shout out to Nick about helping, you know, her practice grow together. And um, again, uh, I this you know this has been an amazing, fun interview. We we meet once a week anyway in our mastermind meeting, and we meet three times a year in person. So I always so you know enjoy your company in our meeting, and you know what Christina gonna do like prank on me this time, you know. So it's always fun. Sometimes we need that. We need that. Um, socialization and because we're all humans too as a doctor so you know not only just helping people we have the other side of our life and i want to make sure our colleagues maintain that happiness and passion instead of you know distressed out and you know feeling like gloomy and like oh you know d-day is coming you know no yeah. there's always there are patients that we can help there are always food problems we can help and I know, you know, as far as especially podiatrists, we became foot doctor for reasons. And I want to make sure uh, my mission is to kind of remind you that, hey, there are better ways to practice that you can do what you love doing every day so that you cannot wait to get up until tomorrow so that you can help more patients. Any, any last um, comment or statement before we end this interview, Christina? Uh, I would say, well, working with you, uh, Dr. Ahn, has been really, really great. I really enjoyed it. I really have had a lot of fun. And um, I know when I first met you, I was so intrigued by what you were telling me that I woke up every day at 5 o'clock in the morning and started reading the material that you told me to read. And it was like I would wake up and it, it was like Christmas morning and I'm five years old uh -huh. and I can't wait to go and open up all the presents. So that's how I felt when I first started working with you. And I still feel very excited about, you know, uh, about my practice. And wouldn't it be great if everybody felt like that? You know, you wake up and you're five years old and you're running to open up your presents, you know? It's awesome. Just a, it, great. So it, <laughs> everyone should be, you know, it adds, it's exciting. And like you said, you feel very uh, motivated by helping people. So it's very satisfying. So it's, it's not just making money and paying the bills and, you know, being on the treadmill of your job. Uh, this is something different. This is uh, to be excited to to go to work. Awesome. Oh, this has been so great. So yeah. guys, um, I'm going to put description below in this um, you know video or you might be listening to podcast or watching YouTube, but I'll put Christina's practice information in the description, her website, her contact info, so you can get to know more about her. If you're a patient and you might think you might be thinking that oh maybe uh, dr jensen can help me go make sure check out that description and then visit her site and then get to know more about her i'm sure she's you know willing to help you no matter what it takes that's her personality and then again thank you for joining this interview watch thank you for watching this and um yeah just don't forget to subscribe or follow this channel so that you don't miss out any other future episodes well, thank you. It's been great, Christina. Yeah. And then I'll see thank you, you so pretty much. soon. Thank you, Dr. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.